Okay, more progress on the Han Solo and Carbonite. Okay, last time we saw, I was putting these LEDs in and getting the fibers in. I have a broken fiber on this right here. I'm going to try to fix that tonight. Glue in a new fiber and then glue down some new LEDs. I've got three more LEDs. These are the last LEDs. So once they're done, I can start cutting in a USB switch, removing the old wiring. I'm going to leave this push button box in there. But removing the old wiring and wiring this thing up. Now I'm trying to decide if I want to put the USB plug on this part or the back. I hope never to have to open this again, but with enough wire, I could put the USB plug on the back and it really would be fine. Okay. So I'm probably going to do that. I've already made the video on the USB plug. I got to find where I left them in here. That shouldn't be too hard to find because I've cleaned this room up significantly and I know where most everything is now. What I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to get these installed and fix this broken fiber. Now I'm using epoxy resin on these things, the two part epoxy resin. I found if I buy them in the big bottles like this, and these are old, <laughs> their labels are fading out, that it doesn't cost so much to use this stuff pretty constantly. So I tend to turn to it. For mixing cups, I'm using old prescription jars. You know, I'm getting up there, I'm starting to get a lot of prescriptions and I'm getting an awful lot of these things. Instead of throwing them away, I cut them up with a uh, razor saw. It takes nothing like a minute to cut it in half. I mean, not even a minute, like 20 seconds. And when you cut it in half, you got a little mixing cup. So I've been using those and I got a collection of them over there. I've started throwing them away because I've got so many. But I mean, good, good, because you're going to throw them away anyhow. Why not reuse them before you throw them away? So just a little tip. So again, what we do is we take some brass tubes, put the LED in one end, put the fibers in the other. It accomplishes a couple of things. One, the fibers get lit and you know they're up with the LED. Only thing you got to make sure of is that when you put the fibers in there, that they line up with the tip of the LED. Because if you don't do that, they still may not light up very well. Okay, so as that epoxy is curing, I start moving them around a little bit and powering them up just to make sure I can see them. I wait until it's starting about, about to start to cure, then I do that. Now, these LEDs, the one with the really long wire is green. That one isn't getting put in just yet. That one is for the panel right here with this because this screen right here is supposed to be green. And I finally figured out how to cut that out. Okay, and do it correctly. I'm going to take a, my, uh, to me, a handy drill and drill out along the edges of it and then cut it out and then file it. But I'm going to drill inside the profile so then I can cut it out and drill it. The replacement part, cast in resin, is here. Okay. And let me do a zoom real quick. One of these zooms that, you know, so we can see it a little bit cleaner. So there's my replacement part. I have kept the resin mold. It's made with Oyamaru. So I can remold this if I need to and get it in there just fine. Okay. And if I screw this part up, I can always make a new one. So I should be able to replace that with that. Uh, I'm going to take some black styrene and build a light box behind this right here. Okay. And then I'm going to put that green LED in the light box. Now, the reason I use black styrene is it won't light leak. I don't want that green light leaking out because the fibers will pick up the green over on the other side. And then I'm instead of like a red glow or a white glow, I get a greenish white glow a faint green in the white glow and the red is mixed with green it's kind of purple and i don't really want purple showing up in here these fibers down here are okay let me zoom back out these fibers are down here are okay because they're not overlapping each other so you won't really have any light leak but you can get light leak from fibers so just keep that in mind when they're really running tight together like they are over here if I'm not careful, I'll get light leak between them. So when I run the 
light can for these fibers, I want to make sure they're one, and I got to be careful because these are really stiff fibers, they can break. I want to run them underneath this and keep them separated so their light conduction is not brought all together. Okay? These are long enough that I could bring them down to the same point but I'm gonna have a problem because these might overlap so I might do these a separate color up top and keep them from overlapping if I were to put these their light can here I won't have any overlap and I won't have any light leak I also have this one over here and I was thinking of running all these together and you don't want it too too steep of a bend in a fiber because then you will have no light transmission uh, contrary to popular belief too much of a bend in a fiber and light will not transmit down the fiber. Uh, fiber optics work with a, an equation that sine theta c equals n2 over n1. Well, theta is being the angle for the fibers, and if you exceed a certain angle, then the fibers are no longer able to carry the light. So I don't like doing really tight bends in my fibers when I'm doing this stuff. The other way around it is I can take some electrical tape and wrap it, well, anyhow, I'm getting distracted. So anyhow, I don't want to bend the fibers too much. That just will be counterproductive. On top of that, I just thought of a way of light blocking these fibers without paint. I could just wrap them with light, uh, electrical tape. So if my fibers are overlapping like right here, I just put some electrical tape around this bundle, that'll block the light and then I won't have any crosstalk between the two fiber bundles with different colors mixing. So there are ways to mitigate this. There won't be so much stray light inside here. I'm worried about the fibers picking up the light because I'm keeping everything in brass cans. All right, I've ranted long enough. It's time for me to get to work because I have limited time. I have like 10 or 15 minutes to get this done tonight. So I'll be back in a little bit. In case some of you are wondering what a Tamiya Handy Drill is, this is a Tamiya Handy Drill, okay? It is a model kit in and of itself to put together, okay? It says Electric Handy Drill on the bottom. I don't know if we've improved over the years because I bought this like four or five years ago. I don't even know if they still make it. It drills at the proper speed for plastic. It's perfect for drilling holes in plastic. Using this, I rarely break drill bits. Now, one problem, though, it only comes with one collet, and it's really hard to find drill bits that fit that collet. So I got on eBay, on Amazon and searched out um, Dremel collets, and I found two or three sets, and I bought all, all of them, and one of them fits in here fine. Okay? And I use that to change my drill bits with, and I can always I can use all different sizes of drill bits in this. So that's the one flaw with it is it comes with one collet, but you can get Dremel collets that fit it, and then I can use it with different uh, size drill bits. Works beautifully on plastic. Will drill wood. It's just really slow on wood, but it's great on plastic. Perfect. So I'm going to use this to drill that out, just in case anyone's wondering what that is. Well, right here, I got the hole drilled out, right where my finger is. You take a look at that, it's not very clean. It skipped on me, and that fiber is harder than the plastic, so it was kind of hard to drill it out. I ended up having to drill it from the back, and it misaligned. But the good thing is, if I mushroom the fibers a little bit with the epoxy resin on that, you may not even notice it. So I'm gonna go ahead and run a fiber through that. I'm gonna mushroom then to the fiber a bit. And let's see what the end result looks like. It may not look as clean as these two, but it might not look too bad. I'm hoping. I'll be back in a bit. All right, I probably said this earlier, but I'm gonna say it again because it's been a little while since I've updated this. This end right here is a freshly cut fiber. It's really rough around the ends. I know it's transmitting a little bit of light, but that just kind of emphasizes the roughness around the ends. If I go to this end, this end, oh, hey, come on camera, behave yourself. It you don't want to. So let's do a zoom and make it behave itself here. Now, if you look at this end of the fiber, you can focus, come on, there we go. You look at this end of the fiber, it's much nicer, it's smoother, it's been bloomed out a little bit, and because it's bloomed out, it lights the whole end of it up much better than this end is doing. Okay? Come on, camera, you can focus. I know you don't want to. 
wants to focus on everything but my hand. So don't give it a choice. Okay? So it's much better than this end, which is pretty rough. All right? So that's what I mean by blooming the end of the fibers. All right. There's the replacement fiber in place. As you can see, all the roughness and everything disappear when the fiber gets in. So I need to glue that down and get it in place. The fiber is actually bigger than the old one. I used a heavier gauge fiber. That helps with that roughness and why that look doesn't look so bad. There is a rough ring around it in one spot, but I'm not going to worry about trying to correct that too much. So I'm happy with that and how that got fixed. It's picking up the ambient light right now, and that's why it's lit up. And the other ones are not because they are plugged in. So I'm going to go ahead and get that glued down and glue down some cans and some LEDs. Back in a bit.